What's going on, Shrewd Gang? My name is Camden, and I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I might be doing another update video on BlackBerry, ticker symbol BB. I'm going to look at the intraday chart, kind of look at the whole entire trend that we've been playing out since this bullish run-up as well. And then towards the end of the video, I am going to be showing some Ortex data. So hopefully this week is going to be a pretty bullish week. You know what we do over here at the Shrewd Gang. Nonetheless, uh, just as investors, I'm pretty sure all investors should do this, uh, or a lot of them do do it already. But average down, man. Every, every red day we've seen for BlackBerry, we've averaged down. I believe on Friday I was at, or Thursday I was at 28, Friday I was at 36. It's just going to keep adding up, keep adding up. Now, sadly for me, I'm having to average up rather than some of the people that invested into BlackBerry recently having to average down. But of course, um, 36 shares to a lot of people is not enough. Unfortunately, money doesn't grow on trees over here, but I'm going to continue to put as much money as possible as I can into BlackBerry. As of right now, it was a pretty cool intraday uh, chart that we have playing out. So we got a nice little shorter. Uh, then we got a nice little head and we got a nice little second shoulder indicating some sort of bullish activity now Of course, uh, this is going to be the inverse is going to be an inverse head and shoulders The neckline is going to be right about here. You saw a nice clean break over it uh, Nonetheless, the neckline was around that VWAP line. So you got a nice clean break over that we're currently testing this somewhat strong resistance point uh, But there's really nothing too hefty in the sell order side of things as long as we can match these sellers with buyers We should be able to continue to push see some bullish activity today um, If we see a break over the only type of bullish action we had as soon as the intraday started, then this should nonetheless have us gap up at least a tiny bit to a different price point. I don't really see any other points in the intraday that we could look at, uh, but we have some points in the pre-market that we could end up capping out of, and then the aftermarket of Friday, and just some past resistances, past supports as well. Now on the red days, I want you guys to know something real quick. Let me update this real quick. This is going to be the outflow. This is going to be the inflow. Think of this as like a bathtub, a BB bathtub. You have a full bathtub uh, with water constantly coming in and water constantly coming out. The water coming out is going to be the outflow, also known as the selling. And then you got the buying side of things, the inflow, the water coming into the bathtub. Um, if Usually on the days where there's more outflow than inflow, this just means that there's more sellers. Fortunately, there is a lot of apes coming into the BlackBerry community. Fortunately, there is a lot of BlackBerry lovers that will never ever sell this thing and then um you have some other paper hands fomo buyers that came in recently with this bullish run-up that are going to be selling out here and there now the only way we can get over this we've already seen so many bearish days we're already we i think we've went down three percent today we're at 1.7 percent now um and some bearish activity but we just got to make sure the people that are selling out if they're going to sell out well they should sell out now once the buyers start getting in once the whole entire market algorithm and just investors in general see BB at the valuation that it is currently sitting at, then long buyers will start to get in. Then long investors will start to put bullish positions on it, which in return will have uh, more inflow than outflow. Nonetheless, some more bullish days than bearish days. We're on a pretty strong bearish trend. If I go to the past three months, it's, it looks kind of wonky, but um, you see this two hour candle and like kind of close right there. It did take a nice little bounce off this high price point. Uh, but just in the general uh, trends of things, the general pattern, you can see that we're moving pretty sideways, but nonetheless on some decreasing activity, we're on a bearish trend. Now, of course, if we start seeing a nice little turnaround, um, this should give us enough momentum to break over this descending resistance, nonetheless popping us over and finally seeing some bullish activity. Now, if I can delete some of these lines out of the way and show you the past five days, you can see on Wednesday when we had that pretty hefty dip and then Thursday in the pre-market dipping even more, it kind of took a huge bounce off of this point at around $12.30. Now we're pretty much testing it as we speak. And what do we see once again kind of play out when you had an, when we had this inverse head and shoulders, uh, we see another bounce. So this is most definitely reassuring. This is a pretty strong support. Um, if we get continuous bounces off of this, then maybe BB at $12.40 is going to be the new BB at $8.09. Stocks love to find new supports, and the fact that this is acting as if it's a pretty strong support at a way higher price point than what we were sitting at before this bullish run-up, that gives me a lot of hope as well. As long as we can continue with this bullish volume, continue with this buying pressure, I should overcome any type of selling pressure. We've seen about eight days, nine days of selling pressure, bearish activity in a row. Stocks can't be green forever, just like they can't be red forever. So as long as you can manage your risk, invest intelligently instead of just buying a stock all at once on a bullish run-up like a lot of BB holders did. I'm not trying to offend anybody, but try to trickle down your investments. When it's a huge bullish run-up, throw about one-fourth of your investment in. Um, on another day, throw about one-fourth of your investment in. The next day, it could be down 10%, you know, and then you'd be effed. Throw, your, throw another one-fourth in it. And then just make sure if a stock is falling, your position falls with it. 
This will help you find reversals super easily and nonetheless get you the best percentage once you see that turnaround, uh, that reversal, starting to see some bullish activity as well. If you're still here, if you're still invested in BlackBerry, I want you to pat yourself on the back. Trust me, after a bullish run up like that, there's a lot of people that want to see it fall right back down to where it was. There's a lot of bets bearish bets of, of it falling pretty much back down to where it was. Nonetheless, falling even more, putting the short sellers, putting the ones with bearish positions in the green, green, green machine while we see a lot of red, red in our favorite stock, brown bread. Now in the past couple of videos, I gave you some points to look out, out for. I'm gonna go to the past one month. Um, so it's pretty reassuring to see another bounce on this support line. And the lowest point I could really see it going to is around $11.30. I really feel like if we see some sort of bounce right here, this is gonna cause the people that sold out, the people that were iffy about BB after this bullish run up, waiting for a perfect time to get into it. I feel like they're gonna be starting to get around uh, 10, high $10, $11. I feel like that's just the general psychological price point uh, for BB to be start being invested into once again. However, though, um, I really want it to take a bounce right now. And of course, I know a lot of you do as well. The only way we can get this bounce and continuous bounces is to slap that ask price. We have 12 thousand shares waiting to be bought at $12.42. Now, unfortunately, if you want these to be filled, the price is going to have to fall down to $12.42, about 20 cents under where we're at right now, nonetheless bringing us down to around negative 3% in the intraday activity. If the market sees that there's 12,000 shares waiting to be bought around this price and there's sellers around that price waiting to um, fill those orders as well. Every seller needs to be met with a buyer. Every buyer needs to be met with a seller. Then of course the market algorithm is going to fall that down that low and scoop up as many orders as they possibly can. Now, if people are buying and slapping the ask at a higher price, and each dip will be higher than the last dip. Nonetheless, you'll be on a strong bullish trend. We've been seeing a lot of bearish activity due to people selling off and also short sellers and BlackBerry as well, but nonetheless, mostly just people selling off. You see inflow and outflow. Let me give it a refresh. It's at 24, 26. Uh, now you see it at 25, 28. So still more people starting to sell rather than people buying stock into the float of BlackBerry. Out of the large scale orders in the past five days, the biggest one you see is on the 15th. The selling pressure is out of this world. I mean, even on the days where you see some large orders, uh, people really see that it's a great time to get into the stock. You can see that the selling pressure is still immaculate, still matching with that bullish pressure almost exactly. And even on the days that we, that we see some large scale orders like this, we're just pretty much flat. You don't see any buying nor selling pressure. You just see common dojis, one hour candles during this day. Opening and closing are generally around the same price, meaning that the stock doesn't know, the market algorithm doesn't know whether it needs to be bullish or bearish. The buyers and sellers are pretty much meeting at the same price. It's really that simple. You know, it sucks to say that it's as simple, but it's literally people just selling out as much as we hate to see it and as much as we want everybody to continue to hold and as much as we're holding and continuing to buy more, we're always going to have to pick up the slack from other people as well. This happens all the time in the stock market. You know, not everybody's going to be in the same page as you know, everybody really sees the same things that you do. So it does make you punch the air. Sometimes you just see a huge sell order coming at $12.80. $12.80 is around the price point of uh, here. Um, if we don't get enough buying volume to crush, nonetheless chip away the, the orders at $12.80, then of course we're going to be capped out around here. If we have enough bullish volume, enough buying pressure, enough orders around the ask price to break through this sell wall, then of course we're going to push it past $12.80. If we can eat up all the selling orders, meet them with buying orders, then we can get the selling orders out of here, continuation of bullish volume and continuous bullish pushes. Now, of course, um, the RSI chart is pretty overbought right now. So that's probably why you start seeing some selling orders starting to fill up. People see this, people use this as indications whether to buy or sell, some day trading plays. So as much as we see different things and as much as we want different things to happen, there's a million different indicators out there. So people use a million different indicators, uh, nonetheless giving them different price points than some other indicators, nonetheless giving them more reasons to sell rather than buy, vice versa. So just know if we continue to fall, there's still price points to look out for. I could even push, place one around this right here, just the general price point of this bullish run up, kind of capping out and flinching back but just know that we have a few points around the $11 range we also have about three points around the $12 range so the fact that we're currently just bouncing back and forth around this $12 range makes me pretty happy to see we saw a fat bullish run up after this uh, inverse cup and handle formation kind of play out pushing us over the VWAP line as well I would hope to see some sort of higher low if we start to see some consolidation nonetheless though we aren't even breaking through these sell orders right here these are just sitting still not even really being chipped away in fact just getting heftier as I speak so 
uh, the continuation of bullish volume most likely isn't really there just yet. Now, if we start to see people like right here at around $12.68, just slap the ask price, all these buy orders around $12.42, kind of slap the ask price, then these will all start to be chipped away, nonetheless ate through and can in a continuation on the bullish volume. That's why you see for AMC, when we start to get capped out at certain points, just like a bullish push, like a nasty bullish breakout, is because people see this. A lot of AMC holders have been through this, have seen it for about five months, almost six months now. We know that there's that they try to cap out prices with these large selling orders. Now, I would love to see consolidation at $12.80. That'll indicate a healthy consolidation and room for some more bullish run-ups. But if you see a cap out at $12.80 and then people start taking that as selling pressure and then it gets more dramatic, cough, cough, in the open of the intraday for BB today, then the, bell, then the bearish pressure, the selling pressure is going to be more heftier than when you see buying pressure. Just know I'm not leaving. I don't think, I really don't think you should leave either, but this is not financial advice. So please don't take it that way. I do not paint the narrative. I literally just do BB updates. I talk about the stock. I give my own analysis. If you don't like it, then please leave. It's as simple as that. <laughs> but other than that, uh, let's go ahead and bring over this Ortex data. You still have that sell while around $12.80, not really moving at all. We haven't gotten, well, it hasn't made it up to that ask price just yet. I just want you guys to be prepared for anything and everything. Don't let don't let red be the reason for you to sell. Let red be the reason for you to buy. Kind of grinds my gears knowing that there's some BB holders that bought on this bullish run up and then are looking to sell now. A, a bag hoarding. It's like the opposite of what you should do in the market. You know, you should buy on the bearish days and sell on the bullish days. There's a lot of new investors, so what do we need to do? We need to we need to help teach them. Now I know I'm not the best catalyst as a teacher. <laughs> But I know I could give some sort of education to some of the newcomers because I was in your same shoes about two years ago. Um, I lost thousands of dollars in the market doing same week expiration calls um, at terrible entries and also just like terrible strike prices as well, far out of the money. That caused me to lose thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Nonetheless, causing me to take a step back, teach myself a little bit about the market. And two years later, uh, here we are now talking about BlackBerry. <laughs> but I'm still an ape. I'm AMC GME Nation, baby. And BB, uh, hopefully in the near future, is going to be scooped up in the majority by apes. But as of right now, the main play is AMC. Will always be AMC. The main play is GME. Will always be GME. I will always be invested in a GME knowing that they are turning themselves into a profitable company. Uh, I will most likely be invested into AMC for the long run, but a more short term, if we see some sort of short squeeze, that'll be the catalyst for me to sell out. Nonetheless, get back in once we see some bearish activity start to average down, start the process of averaging down back into AMC. So we all know the earnings that are coming up on the 24th. It should be a pretty big week for us. We also have that general meeting at the, on the 23rd as well. So that also should be some sort of bullish catalyst for us. I have my fingers crossed, I'm hoping. Um, but we also have some other bullish news that came out today. So this right here is just the announcement of uh, their meeting. It says it gives you a nice little link, so I'm not going to get into deep into that. But this right here, BlackBerry QNX, Mr. John Chin reports, BBC, yo, baby. <laughs> So it's now embedded in over 195 million vehicles. This is a strong public bullish catalyst. I would get deeper into it, but I just want you to know that they are increasing the installation of BlackBerry QNX and all these EV and AV vehicles. This is a strong bullish catalyst. And if they keep this up and see some positive gains just throughout the embedded software and just throughout BlackBerry tying in more with these EV and AV companies, this should really give BlackBerry a strong foot in the new industry that they are currently playing themselves out in. FOMO is a real thing. As much as I hate to say it, and as much as I hate to call people FOMO buyers, uh, FOMO is a real thing and it can really shoot a stock price up. Nonetheless, keep it at a certain price. When Wall Street analysts upgrade their price points, this just gives a greater public view on the stock. Literally, that's all we need for BlackBerry. We already have great bullish news coming out over and over and over again for BlackBerry. But what's really holding us back is selling pressure. People come into the stock of BlackBerry like I am on right now and they're like, oh, let me let me check some things out, you know? Financials are looking beautiful. Revenue looking, eh, it's iffy, you know? Cash flow per share looking iffy. Uh, they have a lot of stuff to turn around, but at the same time, they are, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they are. 46 set to asset ratio is still beautiful, even though it could be a little bit lower, but they see this. They're like, analyst price targets? Oh gosh, the highest one is $10 and the valuation right now is at $12.77? This is overvalued, you know? Uh, I'm, I'm back holding at $14. I need to sell out, seriously. It's gonna fall down to $10. It's gonna fall down to $7.75. Um, it could fall down to $4.50. But no, <laughs> the, 
these are literally people from Wall Street. You know, as, as much as I hate to say it, the people that give these valuations are just analysts, public analysts. They do it in an article. They do it on um, Seeking Alpha. They do it on Market Watch. These are the analyst price targets they add into these type of ratings. So it's really, it's really kind of hard to go against Wall Street. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of hard to get go against the big man when the big man literally controls a lot of different things that we don't really know about. And of course, a lot of us can see right through it, can see right through the BS, but the majority out there sees Seeking Alpha, sees all these other articles, looks at it as some pretty good news that can give them some insight that they didn't really know about. Nonetheless, they see stuff like this, and this also makes them second guess, scratch their head a little bit. Um, nonetheless, though, I've been averaging up. I was at $8 for my position average at around 20 shares. I got eight more at the beginning of last week, and then on Thursday or Friday, I think I picked up enough to get me at 36 shares. So I'm currently averaging up. If there's another dip opportunity, even though it's probably going to be uh, now or never, <laughs> I'm probably going to end up scooping up some more shares. I really want to get to that 100-day mark so I can play a little bit with some options in, in a way. But as of right now, um, I'm sitting at 36, hoping to get more. So as of right now, the short interest change is 0.013 percent <laughs> you know we've been seeing this a lot play out for blackberry just kind of capping out uh just kind of like capping out at a certain point and then since then it's just been falling i'm going to bring these shares on loan over i'm going to bring the average days that the shares on loan are held for the average days that the short sellers are holding their short positions for we currently have 25 million shares on loan so just think of that as around 20 25 million shares that are being shorted into the blackberry float right now um, this is continuously decreasing. You'd hate to see it, but you also love to see it. The more that the short sellers get out of this stock, the more that we start to see some bullish pressure. Right now, since it's bullish run up, the short sellers um, are just looking for ways to get out of it right now. And then once you see some bearish activity, it almost seems like they're just leaving as soon as they possibly can. <laughs> this is also very reassuring to me because the more that this continues to fall, the more that means that shares were covered. The borrowed shares that were immediately sold and bought back at a lower price so they can keep the difference. When they're bought back, that's more shares into Blackberry's float. And then once they're bought back, they have to be returned um, all of that is known as covering a short. So the more that we see this fall, the more shorts that are being covered, more stock bought back into Blackberry's float. Now with some people actually selling off their stock with short sellers also being in the position, this has heftied up that red activity. So the shares on loan, you can you currently see it falling down to 24 million. Still falling, we're at 24.6 million. Seven days ago, we were at 27. I believe seven before that, we were at like 35. And then um, the week before that, we were at 45. Kind of capping out at around 45 million shares on loan. We're at 20% utilization, still falling. You'd love to see it. Cost to borrow, the highest cost to borrow was 1.5%. On Friday, I think the highest cost to borrow was around like 2.8%. Don't get your hopes up just yet. There's still 25 million, around 25 million shares on loan being bet against BlackBerry. And the average days that all of these shares on loan are being held, yes, there are shorts picked up today, shorts picked up yesterday, but the overall average is around uh, 67 days. So if you were to go 67 days back in the price activity, it's currently June 21st. So let's go about two months and seven days back. So we're gonna go around April 4th. 14th. Perfect. So the price at around April 14th, you opened at $9. The lowest was $8.90. The high of that day was $9.20. Now, let's go to the price point we're at as of today. <laughs> the high already, or I guess this is based off of June 18th's data, so Friday, but the high on Friday was $13.87. Low was $12.62, and we closed at $12.90. So whether you like it or not, total average being held at around 67 days for these shares on loan, it just shows that they are still in some deep SHIT. Now, if the stock price continues to fall, of course, the shares on loan is most likely going to fall with it, just based off of... Um, you can squeeze a shorts out of their position as in the stock price flies super high and the shorts are like, holy F, I don't have enough money to meet my collateral. <laughs> I don't, I'm probably going to get margin called. There's also another case where if the stock price falls, the short sellers can basically see it as like, hey, this is the lowest we see the stock price at. We're currently in some deep waters, so we might as well take advantage, minimize the risk, minimize our losses, and just cover now, get out of our position now. A lot of the people that got in recently for BlackBerry are frustrated. They're so frustrated. So what does that cause them to do? It causes them to sell out. Nonetheless, hate BlackBerry and hate everything that represents BlackBerry. And I hate to see it because it's not BlackBerry's fault. If you bought on the bullish run-up, I'm sorry, you know, it sucks. That really does suck. However, you can minimize your risk by averaging down. It's that simple. But if you bought on the bullish run-up and you had $500 and you threw $500 in on the day that it, was, that it flew, hoping that it would rise higher, 
then I'm sorry, you can hate BlackBerry, but that is on you. <laughs> Just note to average down, it's silly for me to tell you this. I know everybody that's watching this video right now knows how to average down, but a lot tend to forget it. I just wanted to give a nice little update video on BlackBerry. If you have any questions at all, please throw them down in the comments below. I would, I'm trying to help you all out as much as possible. And once again, I do not paint the narrative. I'm just doing BlackBerry updates. So hope for the best, prepared for the worst. Shrew gang, I appreciate y'all being here. If you can like, share, subscribe. Don't forget about that bell either, dogs. Come on now. Please stay safe out there. Um, another BlackBerry video is going to be coming out tomorrow, the next day, the next day. You know the vibes. You know the vibes, BlackBerry gang. You know, you know what's going on. We need to educate the newcomers, the ones that are still fighting to this day, bag holding. Uh, it's very stressful to be bag holding. So as much as I want to hate everybody that's hated on me, I know how stressful it is. I know it is. Just take it as a learning experience. You know, I've had a million learning experiences in the market. So just take it as a learning experience and learn from it. Just don't do it again. It's as simple as that. Um, me averaging into every single stock I've been in has caused me to see some crazy gains, some crazy percentages. And I'm telling you, it works. I appreciate y'all watching this nice little update video. If you can like, share, subscribe, don't forget about the bell either. That'll help me out so, so much. Please stay safe out there. I want to be able to talk to y'all tomorrow. Nonetheless, though, peace out. Shrew Gang.